In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of SO2, sulfur dioxide. So let's begin by counting the valence electrons in this molecule. So this molecule has one sulfur atom and two oxygen atoms. Both of these elements are found in group 6A of the periodic table, and they each therefore have six valence electrons. So it's going to be 6 plus 2 times 6. And 2 times 6 is 12. 6 plus 12 is 18. So sulfur dioxide has 18 valence electrons. Now how can we use this to draw the Lewis structure of SO2? Now what you want to do is you want to identify the highest multiple of 8 just under 18. So multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24, and 32. 16 is the highest multiple of 8, just under 18. If you subtract 18 by 16, you get 2. This is the number of electrons on the central sulfur atom. Two electrons corresponds to one lone pair. So let's draw the Lewis structure of sulfur dioxide. And let's begin by putting the lone pair on the central sulfur atom. Now, sulfur can be found on the third row in the periodic table. And therefore, it's one of those elements that can have what is known as an expanded octet. Sulfur can have more than eight electrons around it. So sulfur, phosphorus, chlorine, and any elements below them, they can have more than eight electrons. So when dealing with situations like this, you can have a variety of Lewis structures, a variety of resonance forms for SO2. And so what we want to do is we want to draw the most stable Lewis structure. To do that, we need to minimize the formal charge on the sulfur atom. Here's a simplified formula to calculate the formal charge. It's equal to the number of valence electrons minus the bonds and the dots. Sulfur has six valence electrons. And in this structure, it has one lone pair, which is two dots. Now we want the formal charge to be zero. If that's the case, what should the value of B be? If you were to solve for B, what would you get? So let's do the math. If we distribute the negative sign, this will be six minus B minus two. Six minus two is four. And then moving negative B's to the other side, we can see that B is four. Therefore, to minimize the formal charge on sulfur, we want to put four bonds on it, which means we need two bonds on each oxygen atom. And oxygen likes to have two bonds. When it has two bonds, it's going to have two lone pairs. And now just to make sure that we're on the right track, let's add up the electrons. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So that's good. Remember, every bond counts as two electrons. So this, this is the Lewis structure of sulfur dioxide. That's how you can draw it. As you can see, it has a bent molecular shape or molecular geometry due to uh, the lone pair that we see here. And the hybridization of the central sulfur atom, it's sp2 hybridized. It's a hybrid orbital of 1s and 2p orbitals. Now the bond angle for this type of structure, it's going to be somewhere close to 120. It can vary for other compounds with a bent molecular structure, but somewhere around the area would be the bond angle. Now, here's another question for you. Would you say that the SO2 molecule is polar or nonpolar? What would you say? Well, we need to draw the dipole moments. Oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur, so it's going to bear a partial negative charge. Sulfur is going to bear a partial positive charge. And so if we draw the dipole moments, that is the arrows pointing towards the electronegative oxygen atom, 
we get this. These two arrows, they don't completely cancel. If you were to draw two vectors like this, let me draw this better. Both vectors have a y component and they have an x component. The x component of the two vectors, they cancel. But the y components, note that they're pointed in a downward direction. So sulfur dioxide has a net dipole moment, which means it's polar. A polarized molecule is one that has its neutral overall, but it has separation of charge. One side will be positive, the other side is negative. So that's what it means to have or to be polarized. There's a separation of charge. And we can see that in the SO2 molecule. We can see the top part is partially positive, the bottom part is partially negative making the molecule polarized.